please direct your attention to the middle of the field. For the past 39 years, Coach Ron Hebert has been on the sidelines coaching lacrosse. Following a stellar college lacrosse career at Michigan State University, where he graduated with a degree in journalism, Coach Hebert has been a driving force behind the development of boys lacrosse in the state of Michigan. Coach Ron has coached at St. Hugo, Brother Rice, Cranbrook, Northwood University, Oakland University, Notre Dame Prep, and for the past five years at Lake Orion High School. During his coaching career, Coach Ron has led teams to four state championships. In his time at Lake Orion, Coach Ron has led the Dragons to three OAA Red League champions, two regional championships, and two trips to the state semifinals in D1. Earlier this season, Coach, Re Coach Ron recorded his 300th win as a co high school coach as his Dragons defeated Orchard Lake St. Mary's. He currently sits with a career record of 306 wins with just 102 losses. To honor Coach Ron for reaching the 300 win milestone, Lake Orion Athletic Director Chris Bell would like to present Coach Ron with a plaque recognizing him for his 300th win. Congratulations to the magician, Coach Ron Hebert. We look forward to many more wins with you. Let's hear it for Coach Ron. Good evening and welcome to Lake Orion High School. We would like to welcome our guests from Macomb, Dakota. Ladies and gentlemen, Lake Orion High School Athletic Director Chris Bell, along with the Michigan High School Athletic Association, remind all participants to act in an appropriate manner during tonight's contest. We ask all players, parents, and fans to demonstrate good sportsmanship and positive support. At this time, we would like to rec recognize and thank our officials for tonight. Jeff Mastracci, Mike Ai, and J J James McKillop. Gentlemen, thank you for your work and your dedication to high school lacrosse. Without you, these games would not be possible. The privilege of this game was made possible by those who have fought and continue to fight for the freedoms we enjoy. Let us now honor and respect their efforts in our country. Civilian gentlemen, please remove your hats. Active and retired military, we encourage you to render the appropriate salute and everyone able, please stand at attention, placing your hand over your heart as we proudly sing our national anthem.
to both teams. Now let's play the clock. Hello and welcome. We are with Dragon Broadcasting reporting from the Lake Orion football field. Here we have Varsity Lake Orion Lacrosse versus Dakota today. I'm Raymond Valentine, and next to me is Jamison Fanning. How are you doing today, Jamie? Oh, I'm doing fine, Raymond. How are you doing? I'm doing quite fine myself. It's a lovely day outside. Uh, it's a bit warmer than I anticipated. Probably should have dressed a bit less, I'll be honest, but I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. And we're ready for a wonderful game of lacrosse. Yeah, judging by the last one I was at, uh, you were there too around a week ago. I'm looking forward to it. That was a great game, and I've heard this team has been playing very well been talking to a few of the players around the school and I must say I'm excited for this one. Yeah, absolutely. We just came back after a 10-6 to win against Warren De La Salle, so uh, we're doing pretty well right now. Uh, but also, um, Dakota is coming off of a 6-5 to win against Utica Eisenhower, and both teams are pretty evenly ranked, I'll say. Yeah. So this will be a competitive game, and I can't wait to see what both teams do to counter each other. Yeah, me too. In goal for Dakota, number 30, Dylan Porter. And for your Lake, Lake Orion Dragons, number 33, Noah Perillo. As you just heard, no, Dylan Porter in the goal for Dakota and Noah Perillo in the goal for Lake Orion. Wonderful glories, and let's get ready for the faceoff. Jackson Vasquez and Trey Edwards. Lake Orion picks it up pretty early. And on the back side. That's Sam Haynes with the ball right now. Last, last time I was here, Sam Haynes, I believe he had three or four goals in his game. Very good. Cross Papadellis back to Sam Haynes. And he's going for the shot, and ooh. And he, he gets it. Cross Papadellis with the first goal for the Dragons, and only a minute in, less than a minute. A nice goal from a 1-4-1 for one formation. One behind the goal, four right in front of the goal, and one back in the midfield, trying to wait sure, uh, just in case, that uh, the other team got the ball and was able to run back. Uh, pretty risky strategy, actually, because if you miss, there's only one person behind the goal to catch it, and if the other team gets it, there's only one person to defend against them. So, really good that they were able to get, actually get a goal off of it. Jamison Ray for the Dragons, and Trey Edwards for Dakota. Dakota picks it up this time. I have Noah Erickson taking it up the field. And that is out of bounds. And that is Reese Meach bringing it up. He passes to similar formation to what they did last time. We are, exact same one. Yep. Sam Haynes, once again holding the ball back to Cross Papadellis with the previous goal. Takes another shot, oh, just over, just pass. And that is the risky thing about the 1-4-1. Only one person behind the goal makes you really susceptible to having the ball go out of bounds. Yeah, absolutely. I'm impressed with the, the, offense, the offensive pressure that the Dragons have been able to put on, though, so far. I mean, they've gotten a few, maybe even three shots right there. Very good. Goal that from, one's in. Yes, that was in. Now, like I was just saying, very, very pressuring offense. It's already 2-1. to one. They've scored one, one goal per minute or 
They scored two goals in two minutes so far. Doing very well. So then keep it up. Giorgio Ruffini with that last goal. Assist by senior number 14, Brady Drury, his second of the night. You have Jackson Vazquez for the Dragons and Jake Ferguson for Dakota at the faceoff. Tight. And the Dragons are going to get up with it. Again, they've had they've had pretty good de they've had pretty good luck with their face off so far. Two for three. Brady Drury around the back side. To Sam Haynes again. He is he is definitely, from what I've seen, a pivotal part of their offense. Looks like they're gonna be looking to shoot again, and just over. Still the same one four one formation, like you said. But I am impressed how they've been able to get the shots off so far. Plus, their I mean, their defense hasn't really allowed anything to get. To, I mean, I know it's only early, but. There has been no action from the Dakota side. None at all. Dragons seem to be going with their same strategy. It's been working well. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Very true. Oh, right down the middle, and ooh, close shot. It was a good block by, very good block by Dylan Porter. Oh, another great block. That's two. Sam Haynes back with it on the top side of the field. Ooh, another missed shot. That ball really went, wow. It's a quick shot just right over the net. Will be Dragon's ball coming back into it. Tyler Baker with the ball now. Oh. Wow, that was a lot of action over there. Lake Orion is able to pick it up, wow. Number 22, Luke Gannon with that pickup after the ball rolls around seemingly <laughs> around six players from each team. Brady Drury, shot deflected. I know it was a bit of a shaky start for Dakota, but I must say they have had some great, great blocks here. Two from the goalie and that one that you just saw. Brady Drury again. Ooh. Another shot from Ukraine. Still, like I said before, they may only have two goals, but they've been able to get a lot of shots off and more, more chances you have, the more goals you get. So this Dragons offense putting the pressure on very well. But we get to see Dakota here for pretty much the first time. They haven't really gotten too much in them so far, but they're taking it up pretty well. Oh, wow. Wow, great defense. Amazing. Lake Orion picks up the ball thanks to Kyler Carson with that great play. We may be seeing the same formation yet again. Like you said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's been working pretty well. Only two score goals of the night, so must be something good about it. It's true. Luke Gannon in the back. Shot, just missed it. It's Kyler Carson, oh a long shot just over the net. 
He, I think he has had the most shots so far. He's had a lot of decent opportunities, I think. He's taking the ball and he's whipping it in, which is all you can ask for. Mm -hmm. Dragons have it again, back to Kyler Carson. Ooh, low, low shot from Sam Haynes, recovered by Kyler Carson. Oh, wow, great defense. Great defense from uh, Dylan Porter. He's made some excellent stops. And Dakota now pushing up the field. This is the first we've seen of them. They've gotten, they haven't gotten this close so far. And a shot. Oh, no. He's sending it to the back. It's Noah Erickson in the back. Thought he gives it. Very close. But given to the goalie. It's Lake Orion. Now they're taking it back up. And that was our first and only uh, Dakota defense <laughs> or uh, offense so far. Yeah, I must say, uh, besides, I mean, the two goals at the beginning were very good, but there's been some very solid defense from both teams. I mean, uh, Dakota's gotten more chance to show their defense, of course, but like Rain also showing excellent with that steal from Kyler Carson, and they were able to take it back up and get a few more shots off. But two to nothing Dragons so far with five minutes in the first. As they're in timeout. So, the Korean's been doing a pretty good strategy right now of keeping the pressure on Dakota. Absolutely. They have just kept taking the ball back whenever they've had any chance of losing it and just kept throwing it at that goal, yeah. which can be risky, but the fact of the matter is it's been working so far. Yeah, it's true. I mean, they're up 2 nothing, and like I said before, getting shots off, it's you always like to see it. If you can get an open guy, line it up, I mean, that's all, that's all you can ask for, really. I know they say that the uh, best offense is good defense, but it looks like in this game the good best defense has been a good offense. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's see how this continues as they come back to the field. I've seen many shots from many, many shots from Kyler Carson and some from Tyler Baker. They've been doing a lot. But uh, the first goal from Cross Papadelis. It's, I believe it's going to be Dragon's Ball in the Dakota portion of the field. They're in the back, looks like. It looks like they're running two in the back now, three in the middle. Jackson Vasquez, I believe he is the only freshman on the team. He, is. he played extraordinarily, though, uh, when I watched him last game. It was very impressive. There's a reason he's the only freshman on the team. <laughs> I guess you're right. Oh, a, bit of a bit of a mistake there, but wow. Wow, another, another fight for the ball. Dakota comes up with it. Like, Orion is being very aggressive on this defense. They're getting a lot of hits on the players, and that is going to be a turnover to the Lake Orion side. Sam Haynes bringing it up the field. Jackson Vasquez in the middle again. Sam Haynes almost looking like he wants to take the shot. Jackson Vasquez with the shot, but another good block. Another good block from <clears throat> Dylan Porter on Dakota. He he has been he has impressed me so far. Like I said, I know it's only a short bit into the game, but he has played very well. But yeah, after letting in those uh, first two goals, he's really gotten his act together and has uh, really just become a wall of a man. Yeah, absolutely. And Dakota Dakota recovers the ball here. They've it seems that every time they get the ball, like Ryan is getting their sticks in there and knocking it out. They're doing very well, and now Lake Orion has it again. Uh, Braden Brown taking it up for them. They still have two lined up in the back, it looks like. Tyler Baker coming in for the middle. St. Mans again. And Tyler Baker, ooh. Another shot from Lake Orion, and... Another ball weighs past the goal. They've had their opportunities, though. 
All right, it's back in pretty quick. And same Tyler Baker isn't able to get the shot off. That's going to roll out. Georgia Ruffini comes back in. It's Braden Brown taking it back, giving it to Cross Papadellis, guy with the first goal of the game. They're getting pretty close, and another goal for the Dragons. Kyler Carson, I mean, he shot it a lot of times, and he got his goal of the day, so Late it's great. Keep shooting, eventually it's going to be it. Get in. Exactly, 3 nothing Dragons. Kyler, Kyler Carson. Carson. The Dragon yeah, offense today is greatly improved from what we've seen the last couple of games. I really like watching it, honestly. I love seeing how aggressive they are. It's it's very entertaining, very entertaining, I will say. During the last couple of games, uh, Lake Oregon has been a lot of a second-half team where they start off slow and then start to ramp up in speed. They're starting off strong this game, and I like it. Yeah, that's true. We got Dakota. Maybe a Dakota ball. Uh, there's a bit of a fight for it. And still fighting, still on the ground. Don't know, and Dakota seems to have it. And they do, they're taking it upfield. That, and now we're gonna see another offensive strike from Dakota, and I'm pointing this out because we haven't seen much of it. But have Noah Erickson going on the back. Uh, Carter Call lined up very back. Noah, we've seen a lot of Noah Erickson. Oh, and there's a penalty. We've seen a lot of Noah Erickson when they get over to this field. He is, seems to be Ran it all the way around the goal. They're sending it back up. We're going to see a shot from Dakota here, maybe. I don't know if they've shot the ball the entire time. Maybe they've had one shot, but... I think yeah. only one, because it was taken up by our goalie, Noah Perillo, yeah. and then just thrown back to our team. Yeah. And that is going to roll over. We have one minute left here in the first, stopping at around 59 seconds. As it's going to be Dakota's ball in the backfield. Let's see if they can make any buzzer beater plays. Well, we saw a lot of those last game, and the game that happened just before this, there was a lot of. We have a holding penalty on Lake Orion. So there, it'll be a 30 second penalty. And Carter Call starts, starts with the ball and uh, back. It may only be 30 seconds of them playing a, a man down, but on defense, that can mean everything. Yeah, that can make a big difference. And the goalie, Noah Perillo, he gets the ball again. Again, very good defense from Lake Orion, holding them to zero so far in the, the first quarter. Yeah, they're getting the guys up there. Giorgio Ruffini with the ball in the back. He has played very well. He's been making some good passes with his teammates. And there's Cross Papadellis. Sorry, sorry, there is um, Kyler Carson. Both been playing the same spot. Kyler Carson with the previous goal. Really just trying to wait out the clock. I'm really liking this trio of Sam Haynes, Kyler Carson, and Jackson Vazquez. I know these guys have played well from what I've seen. And this, this team seems to be relying on these guys. A great stop, though. Great stop from Dakota. Their goalie has again shown his athleticism. And that marks the end of the first quarter. We have Lake Orion Dragons at three and the Dakota Cougars at zero. It's really it's really been all Lake Orion. I mean, the few offensive pushes that Dakota has had, they've really... They were stopped quickly, really. They, they were stopped quickly. And yeah, it's been great defense from Lake Orion. And, but Lake Orion has also had a lot of missed shots. And I... I do credit the defense for Dakota as well. This is, even though it is three nothing, I do see this as two very good defenses playing each other. Though mm -hmm. the Dragons have gotten some good shots off and three nothing. Two really good teams. It just seems that currently the Dragons have just gotten luckier. They've had more opportunities given to them to be able to get goals. Yeah, I agree. They've been running similar formation the entire time. I believe they changed it up around the five or 
five minute or four minute mark. Yeah, there it seems to be a weird hybrid between a war one four one and a two three one. But that's the thing that's amazing about lacrosse is that the strategies are so fluid because the game play is so quick that yeah. you can see like plays change on a dime really and just change to suit whatever is needed at that moment. All right, they're heading back out on the field. Going to see if Dakota can can really ramp up their offense here. So far, it has been all Dragons. Going to have Jackson Vazquez for the Dragons. And we're going to have Trey Edwards for the Cougars at this faceoff. Like I said before, the Dragons have been very fortunate with their faceoffs. They've won the majority of them. And again, this is a fight for the ball, and he picks it up. Very good scoop from Owen Boyd. You're right, you're, you're right on that hybrid thing, it seems. They do have two players in the back, but it almost seems that Brady Drury is switching from the middle and to the, to the back, back. Whenever it's needed, really. He's able to switch to make sure that they just got whatever's called for in uh, the moment. Let's cross Papadellis with the ball up the middle. And the net. And that's Sam Haynes. They're getting some good passes here. I'm liking the passing from Lake Orion. I feel like it's almost gotten better from the last time I watched. And a shot, but it missed, blocked. Again, Dylan Porter for the for the Cougars. He has shown great athleticism and defense. And wow, another hit out. Lake Ryan has done that multiple times this game, two of which they've completely reclaimed the possession of the ball. Not this time though, but they have like a, they have seriously been aggressive on defense, and it has it has worked out for them. Yeah, wonderful fast break from uh. Uh, Trey Edwards, I think that was, uh, number two, who got the ball, uh, just went coast to coast, really, all the way up the field. Yeah. Not something I was expecting with uh, how Lake Orion's defense has been playing so far, but... Yeah, but we see a penalty on the field here. 30-second technical for delay of game. It's a 30-second technical foul for a delay of game. Not what you want to hear if you're Dakota right now. Absolutely, they, especially since they were just getting a good push. And they're three down. This is not a point in time where you want the ball to go back to Lake Orion and to be a man down. Yep. Jackson Vazquez to Sam Haynes. We've seen it all before. There's Jackson Vazquez again. Looks like that. It almost looked like he wanted to take a shot there, but. And a missed shot from Jackson Vasquez. Oh, and a made shot. Kyler Carson, his second goal of the day. He has gotten the last two goals. That is now 4 nothing. That was a beautiful, what is effectively a rebound. Yes. Picking up that uh, missed goal and just shoving it right in. Absolutely, yeah. Jackson Vasquez with a shot blocked by Dylan Porter. But, but Kyler Carson was able to recover it and hit it right in the back of the net. Great Probably show. Weren't looking. Great show. Exactly what you want to see from the Dragons. Yes. Increasing their lead with no end in sight, really. All right, we have Jamison Ray for the Dragons and Jake Ferguson for the Cougars. Oh, I believe they're making switch. Never mind. It is Dakota Ball. That is Carter Call in the back. Andre Milas passing it to Eden Kreideser. He has ran all around that net. And that looks like it is going to go out of bounds. Yes, it is. All right. The Dragons, they're going to gain recovery off that play. Ooh. Oh, wow. And after
after all that, the Dragons, never mind. Triple interception. Never mind, uh, yeah. <laughs> and seems that Dakota has gotten up with the ball, but a slash from Lake Orion. Now Kyler Carson's taking it up the field. That was a very, very active chain of events, but Lake Orion ended up with the, with the possession. Changed hands about uh, four or five times. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's Jackson Vasquez to Sam Haynes again. These guys have been playing almost all game. I mean, could have a shot here, and he hits it right in the back of the net. It's the fifth goal of the day for the Dragons. I believe that is the first for Sam Haynes. Lake Orion goal scored by number Again, still great offense, and we're still very early into the second quarter. Lake Orion is absolutely putting, they are just, they're, they're beating this, uh, these Cougars down in absolutely. great this fashion. Is, this is a very different Lake Orion than what we've seen before. Uh, like I said earlier, the Dragons for the, like, most of the season this year have been a, like, second half team where they've had to wait to gain momentum but they've just been playing this first half and it's beautiful yeah it's true and we're gonna see Dakota win the face off here Carter call in the back I believe he still has the ball yes he does pass to Aiden Kreitzer Let's see if Dakota's going to be able to get a shot off here. I know they're eager to, and I'm eager to see what they can do. The Lake Orion's spreading around pretty good. They're getting good coverage on them. Ooh, and that is, wow, a great, that is a great pickup from Lake Orion on that, on that Dakota mistake. We have Trevor Wick carrying it up, pass to Brady Drury, and in the back. Another great defensive play, and a goal! Another goal is... What is the, the turnaround rate on these Lake Not, Orion is... Dragons? What did they do with the old Lake Orion Dragons? Where did they go? Where did these guys come from? A... And why didn't they come in sooner? I'm as surprised as you. Lake Orion is on fire today. That is that is another Kyler Carson goal. That's his third goal of tonight. Assist to number 39, Cole Six goals from Lake Orion. Zero from Dakota. And we're not even halfway through the second. <laughs> No, we're not. <laughs> I'm very impressed. That that was came from a great defensive steal on Lake Orion's behalf, and they turned it right into a goal. And it seems, are they going to have possession again? They're fighting for it, and Dakota takes the ball. That is Trey Edwards taking it up, and it looks like we have a penalty. Oh, he's going to take a shot, and Dakota gets their first goal of the game. Trey Edwards, he sees a shot that he likes, and he takes it. That is one of their few shots, I'd say, yeah, only three shots maybe of tonight, or four. And um, two, I think that's what we call karma. <laughs> I guess that's true. <laughs> but that was a great shot from Trey Edwards, and hey, if they've only shot four times, they've made 25% of their shots. <laughs> Love to hear it. Hey, fair enough. That is now 6-1, to one, Lake Orion's lead. Let's see how far they can come back from it. We have a penalty of one minute on Lake Orion. We saw that flag thrown earlier for cross-checking. And it looks like we're going to have Jake Ferguson and Jackson Vazquez for this face-off right after that impressive Cougars goal. They, they got it quick, and they got it down there. That this was impressive. This is exactly what Macomb wants with uh, the Dragons now playing a man down for a minute. This would provide a perfect opportunity if they can get their hands on the ball. The Dragons win this face-off pretty early, pretty clean win. We have Brady Drury in the back holding the ball. Looks like he's going to receive some pressure, though, from the defenseman of of the Cougars. He's running it back up. Hands it to Sam Haynes. That's a bit of a it's a bit of a drop pass, but he's able to recover quickly. Very nicely done. Oh, nice breeze. <laughs> and they throw it in the back. It almost seems they have three guys in the back, but. We're going to fix that soon. Ooh, and missed shot from Lake Orion. I, I'd say that was a pretty good opportunity. He was able to run around all the guys, and he, he had a good shot. Cole Grone. But I believe it's going to be Lake Orion possession once more. Yes, it is. Giorgio Ruffini with the ball on the side. Passing it back. 
to cross Papadelis again. Now we're seeing, Cole, like I mentioned his name before, we're seeing Cole Grown in the back now. I believe we're seeing him for the first, first few plays of today. And they do seem to be running a 2-3-1 formation instead of the 1-4 one that they were running before. And they have been mixing it up, which it's honestly it's a good strategy, I'd say. Never let them know what you're doing. Don't want to do the same thing the whole time. They've crossed Papadelis in the back. He's running around the net. Pass, and oh, a missed shot. Missed shot from Brady Drury. That is two in this possession for the Dragons. And they get it back swiftly. Cole Grone running in. Cross Papadelis again in the back. We've seen him a lot. Oh, that's, that's not Cross Papadelis, never mind. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> We have Giorgio Ruffini starting with the ball. Is he going to look for a shot? I believe he is. Oh, close. He tries to go low. He tries to go low and is very close. Knocks off the goalie's foot. But Lake Orion, they're fighting for it. Dakota had the ball there for a second. And a bit of a bit of a fumble there. There's a, This has happened multiple times today. It just that is complete, our third pile up of the game, just, I think. Absolutely. And Sam Haynes is able to recover the ball. The Dragons... I believe they've won almost all of those. All of those they face have. offs. Yeah. They've won all of those. They've won nearly every face off in this game. Cross Papadellis at Midi. Seems to run in. I think he wants to take a shot for himself, and he does. Cross Papadellis with the seventh goal for Lake Orion Dragons. I believe that is his second goal of the night. <laughs> Way this is very impressive, very impressive gameplay from this every, is, from all the game, Dragons. This is not what I was expecting when I came into the press box tonight. I was not expecting the Dragons to just go hard from the beginning and get a 7-1 lead before the second half is even over, and yet here we are. Yeah, me too, and there's still a good amount of time left in the second quarter. It's not like we're approaching halftime so soon. There's still around, about five minutes yeah, left about. five minutes, and... What seemed to be a Lake Orion possession, Dakota hinders it a bit, and another one of these pile ups. Another, as I'd like to call another them. pile up. <laughs> oh, no. And that is going to be is going to be possession of Dakota. I'm I am uh, kind of amazed with how many of those pile ups, if you call them, that we've seen. Um, I did. We didn't see a lot of them last game, or at least the games that I've been to, and. And they've they've been lasting for a while. We don't see a clear we don't see clear possession for I'd say at least five seconds in. Yeah, that just shows how like well both of these teams are fighting for the ball. They are both desperate for it. It's true. Ooh, and when he knocks it from Carter, calls hands, being aggressive with his stick. <laughs> and that's a bit too aggressive. Still in possession of Dakota. Bringing it around the world for Dakota. Seems he's going to want to maybe take a shot here, but he got double covered. And that pass is a bit over. Oh, oh are we going to see another like we've seen? Yes, we are. And Lake Orion's going to come up with it. That is Carson Negri with the recovery. Gives it to Giorgio Ruffini to take it up. And that is Luke Gannon. Luke Gannon around the back in the corner. And to Kyler Carson, the man with three goals today. Very impressive show for Kyler Carson. Hat trick. <laughs> we have Braden Brown taking around the goal. Wow. Great goal. I, I didn't even see that coming. That was that was sneaky. He ran right around the goal and 
I believe he caught the team off guard, honestly. It didn't seem like a lot of people were anticipating that. Braden Brown with the eighth goal for the Lake Orion Dragons. I wasn't either. What kind of offense do you see after close game after close game randomly come in and take an 8 to 1 lead with 3 minutes left until halftime. I'll tell you to, I'll tell you who, the Lake Orion Dragons offense. That's who. It's true. They have been nothing they have they have been very impressive this entire game. They have had nearly all of the pressure. They've been a few offensive occurrences for Dakota, but it has been all Dragons. Oh, but Dakota, oh, I almost it almost seemed like they recovered it, but and yes, it's going to be Dakota's possession. Trey Edwards taking the ball. Trey Edwards, the man with the only goal for Cougars. It was actually a very impressive goal. He ran right up the middle, saw his shot, and he can't ask for more than that. There's been great coverage from Lake Orion, though, and I guess they haven't had too many attempts, but it seems here he's going to want to shoot, and he takes the shot, but it doesn't go in. Takes a shot, doesn't go in. Um, Noah Perillo, great stop. Dragons are taking it up the field. One thing I'm noticing about each team is uh, it seems that the Dragons, their offensive possessions seem to be longer and more sustaining. They, they have multiple shots. Well, Dakotas are very slim. If they get a shot off, the Dragons often gain possession again with a few good whacks of their stick, and they got the ball going upfield again. Absolutely. The majority of this game has just been dragon offense with a, a little bit of a cougar offense on the side. It's true. All of a sudden, cougar offense with my dragons, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I believe we're going to see we're going to see Dakota possession here, passed in by Trey Edwards up the middle. This could be this could be good for the Cougars and okay another pass oh and he just misses that one trying to get it down the center line up a good shot gives it to Aiden Kreitzer over to it seems there's been some pretty sloppy passing recently it's uh, that pass that is now in the hands of Carter Call it was rather high when shot to him. That has been a, a factor in Dakota's gameplay today. They've had a good few turnovers from their sloppy passing. Aiden Kreitzer on the back. Are they going to be looking for a shot here? Under one minute left to go in the half. And we are reading, reaching just under the one minute period of this game now, around 50 seconds. I think that Dakota really needs to end on a high note here if they're going to want to have hope for this game, because it is a very big lead for the Dragons and. You're going to want to have that momentum going into halftime, knowing that we can score. We can score on this team. And Trey Edwards may be the man to do it. Oh, and that is a block shot from Lake Orion. Again, very good coverage for Lake Orion. And they're going to get, yes, they're going to get possession. That is Dominic Novak with the ball. Passes it up. Now, what would be really bad for Dakota, I was just mentioning it would be good if they ended off on a high note, if Lake Ryan could get a last-minute goal right here and really, really, I don't want to say put the nail on the coffin, but that would be an eight, it's a seven-point lead. That, that, is, that would, bring that to an eight-point lead would uh, really slow down the Cougars in a way that they do not want. They need know, to keep Lake the hope Orion, going. That's their last yep. of the half. We're going to see if Lake Orion timeout here, it's their final timeout. I mean, good use. I'd say if you're going to want to go for this last goal, you're going to want to kind of regroup, say what formation you're going to want to use, get your players together. If you want to go for the hit, if you want to go for the punch in the gut, this is what Lake Orion should be doing. Mm -hmm. Lake Orion's offense this game, I, I know we've brought it up multiple times, but genuinely, I do not know where this came from, but I am all for it. We have hit hard and we have hit long, and we have kept hitting and it has been working wonders for our team. Yeah, the scoreboard shows it. <laughs> We're gonna be heading back out on the field. 18.5 seconds left. Gonna see if they can get a final goal here. Looks like 
We see Jackson Vasquez handling the ball right now. This could, if they get a goal, this could be uh, Dakota's worst nightmare materializing right in front of them. An eight-goal lead is not something you want to try to come back from in the second half. It's true. Especially not with how much possession uh, the Lake Orion offense has had. Yeah, Lake Orion has been very good. Very good and aggressive all game. Jackson Vazquez takes it up. Only a bit of time left, around 10 seconds remaining. You can see if the Dragons can close up their game of the first half. Ooh, and a bit of a mispass, but... Oh, and a bit of a fumble for Jackson Vazquez. Two seconds, and I believe that is going to end it. That is going to end it for halftime. We have a score of 8-1, to one, Lake Orion Dragons over the Dakota Cougars. Great, great offense from Lake Orion. Great defense from Lake Orion. We have seen only greatness from that team, and their, dominant over, their dominance over Dakota. Absolutely. I can't wait to see how they keep up with it in the uh, second court or uh, second half. If they uh, keep up with how fast they've been going, or if they start to uh, lose steam. Uh, hopefully not. Uh, knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. This is their first year playing the cross. Trevor's favorite memory is beating Birmingham in overtime, and CJ's favorite memory is scoring a goal in the Rockford game. In the fall, Trevor will study exercise science and play football for Saginaw Valley State, and CJ will study construction management and play football at Northern Michigan. Next we have Jackson Bellinger is scored by Christina and Dad. Jackson is number 59. He plays defensive midi. He plans to study finance in the fall. This was his very first year playing the cross. He's definitely enjoyed every minute of it and wishes he would have come out sooner. And so do we. Jackson! Next up is Braden Brown, escorted by Alicia and Bobby. Uh, Braden, after taking a year off, came back to the Dragons. He's number 40, he's a midi. Uh, he's enjoyed the lax tournaments and hanging out with the team. Braden, Braden plans on training to become an electrician, take college courses, and hopefully still have time to play all the sports that he loves. Next is Chase Whitaker, number five, defensive midi, escorted by Michelle and Dave, and Stephanie and Jason. Chase has played lacrosse since he was in the third grade. 
His favorite memory was beating Birmingham in overtime. Chase will attend Grand Valley State, pursuing a business degree and to play lacrosse for the Lakers. Next, we have Giorgio Ruffini, escorted by Bob and Susie. Giorgio's number 16, playing attack, having a great game, by the way. Giorgio's been playing lacrosse since the seventh grade. His favorite memory was beating Rockford in the 2021 quarterfinals and advancing to the state finals. Giorgio will attend MSU this fall and plans to study business. Next up is our goalie, number 33, Noah Perillo, escorted by your voice of the Dragons, Tony, and his beautiful mom, Stacy. Noah's been playing lacrosse for 11 years. His favorite memory was beating Rockford. Noah will attend MSU in the fall and in the resident business college. Next up, number 20, Reese Meach. Escorted by Steve. Reese is number 20. He's a defender. He's been playing with the Dragons since he was in the second grade. Funny fact about Reese, he had that same chest pad until we had to change this year. Reese has been recruited to play lacrosse at Davenport University. Next up, number 14, Brady Drury. Escorted by Tara and Brian. Brady plays attack for the Dragons and has been playing since he was 10 years old. His favorite memory is beating Rockford last year in the quarterfinals. He will attend the Eli uh, Broad School of Business at Michigan State in the fall. Next up, number 12, Owen Boyd. Our defense and LSM, he's escorted by Debbie and Patrick. He started playing lacrosse when he was 14. His favorite memory was beating Adams last year for the regional championship. Owen will attend MSU in the fall and plans to pursue a degree in business and pre-law. Next up, number 18, your quarterback, Kyler Carson, escorted by Dale and Lona. Kyler's been playing lacrosse for eight years. His favorite memory was making it to the semifinals last year. Kyler will play football at Hillsdale College next year and will study politics and pre-law. Next up, number four, Cross Papadallas, escorted by Teresa and Chris. Cross is our offensive midi. He's been playing the cross for eight years. His favorite memory was beating Rockford in the quarterfinals last year. Cross will be joining the Concordia Cardinals lacrosse team next fall. Last but not least, number three, Tyler Baker. Tyler's escorted by Jenny and Rob. He's an attack in midi and has been playing lacrosse for six years. Tyler will attend MSU in the fall to study business. And his favorite memory is tillying with the teammates. Can we all just give a round of applause for your 2022 Senior Lake Orion Lacrosse Dragon players. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and non-linear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. 
learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. The cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back. We're here, well, right right and quick, as the action has already started, right back from halftime. The score again, Dragons 8, Dakota Cougars at 1. So far we've seen dominant offense from the Dragons. Looks like that's what we're going to see again. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see how Dakota may have recovered or changed their plan, and I'm looking also looking forward to see how the Dragons can continue their reign of terror. Sam Haynes in the middle. He was playing. He was playing up, more on the upside of the field for the previous half. Jackson Vasquez at the ball looks like he's going to take a shot, and he gets covered by two, two or three guys. Giorgio Ruffini in the back. He's trying to outrun the Dakota player. He passes it up, and that may be a turnover. And yes, Dakota's going to gain possession on that. slowly wait for the next play. <laughs> yes. We have Luke Gannon starting with the ball. We saw a bit of him last quarter, but... All right, so Lake Orion's going to gain possession. Them still on the offensive push. And, of course, now Dakota is a man down due to slashing. So a, a minute of being man down while on defense is never a good thing, especially when you're this far behind. That's true. That is the worst case scenario, yeah, effectively. Dakota, Dakota does not want to be seeing this right now. It seems the Dragons playing pretty firm, good passing all around. Cross Papadellas up the middle. Looks like he wants to take the shot, but there was a bit, bit of a miss there, and a long kick from Number 46, Dakota Caden player, Wink. Caden Wink. And Dakota is going to have possession. There's only three guys up there versus the many of Dragons that are on defense. You can see Aiden Kreitzer come up with the ball. There it looks like he might want to take a shot here. He's looking down the middle. And he scores! And we have Dakota Cougars, the first team to score in the second half. I wasn't expecting uh, their next goal and their first goal of the second quarter or second half to uh, come while they're a man down. But I mean, I guess miracles do exist, you know? Yeah, Aiden Kreitzer was able to weave his way through some of the Lake Ryan players and advance their score to two. Going to have Jackson Vazquez versus Trey Edwards here in the faceoff. Almost around 10 minutes to go. Or two minutes in and already a quick score from the Cougars. If they can, if they can keep that up, we saw it from the Dragons last half. Might be able to see it from Dakota this half. And Dakota's possession off that faceoff. Trey Edwards taking the ball up. Yeah, you can tell they're a man down. There is, it just looks like there is less blue out there and a lot more white. I think they're going to be getting their player back soon. And speak of the devil, they just did. Yep. As it was a one minute unreleasable, they didn't get him back uh, after the score. More of Aiden Kreitzer taking it up, the man who just scored their goal. Carter Call, he's been playing back the whole time. And a drop. A drop from Dakota and scooped scooped up by Lake Orion, but it seems that it seems that Aiden Kreitzer is able to get the ball back and he loses it again, but Jacob Bliss for Dakota scoops it up and they continue their offense. Now this is a thing that we hadn't seen from them. 
the last half. A lot of the times and stuff like that would happen, they would lose possession. But here, they're able to get more shots off. They're able to continue their offense, get in their groove a bit. And that is a big difference. As you can see, they just scored again. That is two for Dakota. And like I just said, they're being, that is more offense. They've gotten possession. Like, don't call it a comeback, but I mean, that is, it's only been three minutes and they've already scored two goals coming back in the uh, beginning of the second half. Yeah, and that scoreboard, 8-3, to three, looks a lot smaller of a gap than 8-1. to one. I know it's only two goals, but something two like this... Two goals are two goals. Something like this can, you know, switch up morale, and this is exactly how Dakota wants to start. They've done everything right so far. This could be just what they need to get the ball rolling, and once it starts rolling, it's going to be really hard for the Dragons to stop it. If Jameson Ray and Jake Ferguson. Jameson Ray doing a lot of these face-offs for the Dragons. And Dakota, Dakota with the possession again. That is their second face off in a row, ending in a victory. And just like, just like the Dragons last half, Dakota is back on offense. Drop pass right there, but easily recovered from Jake Ferguson. Pass now to Trey Edwards. Jake Ferguson again down the middle. Maybe they're going to want to take a shot somewhere soon. But there are a lot of dragons suffocating the middle there. And a shot. A shot from Aiden Kreitzer, but it's no good. And the dragons have the ball. Pass it back to Noah Prill, the goalie, and down the field it goes. Great, great show of defense by the dragons. They, they really needed that. To, Dakota was playing great offensively. Very aggressive gameplay. And if a team keeps that up, you know, it can tire out another team. It can damage morale. And they've already gotten two goals. So the Dragons, it's very good, very good defensive save right there for them. If Sam Haynes with the ball, he's taking all the time he needs. They're in no rush. The more seconds that they're able to uh, wind down on the clock, the less time Dakota has to possibly like start coming back. That's true. Braden Brown looks like he almost wants to shoot. Now he passes it back. Jackson Vazquez in the back. He has he has been playing the mid position. He has taken a lot of shots. We haven't really seen him in the back a lot. And he's coming in. A bit of a maybe a miscommunication. Poor pass on the Dragons and Dakota reclaims the possession. They have had more possession time in this in this half and. Like we said before, that is what Dakota wants, but Lake Orion, very aggressive defense like they've shown. They haven't shown it months, much in these first five minutes, but right there, that was an impressive show, but Dakota still with possession. Trey Edwards with the ball. He's holding on to it, and he shoots. Ooh, Noah Perilla, great stop. Right in the middle of the net. His net, that is. The Dragons, they're going to start pushing back downfield. Oh, and that is a drop ball. Drop ball for Lake Orion, and Dakota gets possession again. Picked up by C.J. Russell after uh, the long throw from uh, Noah Perilla. Yeah, this, we're seeing a combination of good defense and also favorable offense for Dakota. And that is what Lake Orion showed in the first half. And it seems we're going to have another pile up here. Lake Orion quickly scoops it up. That is Braden Brown for the Dragons. Pass it to Jackson Vazquez. A bit of a fumble, fumble there, but. Making a quick break past uh, Dakota's midfielders. Yeah, and that is Kyler Carson. Wow, Kyler Carson. He scores again, his fourth. His fourth of the game. We have had some star players this game. We've had Kyler Carson. We've had Cross Papadellis. Uh, we've had Sam Haynes. Yeah, we've had a great show of athleticism from these Dragons. And we were just talking about the Cougars trying to get break the Dragons down, you know, try and switch the morale up. But the Dragons with that score, that's got to hurt. 9-3 to three, Lake Orion. Our players have been doing good, and they've been doing really well as a team. They've been making sure to work together to communicate to make sure that they, uh, they don't give uh, Dakota as many offenses to get the ball back and to make as many plays as possible. Yes, and I know I mentioned this in the previous pass, but, uh, sorry, in the previous half, but there's been 
significant differences in the teams and their passing. I've noticed that Lake Orion has had a lot more clean passing. They're able to get it right to the other guy's net. Old Dakota's had a few overshots. Jamison Ray now taking it up. We've seen the same players. Cross Papadellas lining up the middle. We have Sam Haynes supporting him on the side. Sam Haynes running it up. Could have, that could have been a shot, but he successfully gets it to Giorgio Ruffini in the back. And it looks like there may be some open space from the score. That is Kyler Carson with another shot, but that goes out of bounds. Boy, that would have been something for him to get his fifth goal here. Kyler Carson, he has been great this game. We have the Dragons still on offense. Now, now I think we're beginning to see a more even game. In, this, in the first half of this quarter, it was a lot of Dakota. After this Dragons goal, I think we're going to start seeing it be more 50-50. And after that, whatever team, whatever team plays best. Cross Papadellas runs it up. Ball very close to the net. Sam Haynes looks like he wants to take his shot, and he does. Tries a lower shot, but blocked by the goalie of Dakota. Well, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a slip there for a Dakota player. Like Orion scooped up the ball, but I'm not sure if they'll have possession. I believe that is going to Dakota, and it is. They're going to be pushing up the field again, and that goes out of bounds right to the Lake Orion sideline. And Lake Orion, they are going to go down the field. Zachary Jones bringing the ball up. George Ruffini with the ball. He's had it for quite a bit of time now. And there's a penalty flag on the field. Ooh, and a shot from Braden Brown, but blocked by the defensive men of Dakota. Speaking of the defense of Dakota, I'm interested to see what penalty was called on them. If we will get information on that. <laughs> Dakota penalty, one minute for slashing. A minute for slashing. Not what you want to see when there's only three and a half minutes left in the quarter. That is a third of your time man down. And again, they're, they're playing defense for their lives here. You don't want to see the Dragons scoring many more. They are in a you're... desperate position right now. You genuinely, as you were saying, uh, this is not what they want to see. <laughs> this could spell disaster. Carter Call playing. He's playing in the middle section now. He was playing in the back all game. Cross Papadellas and Tyler Baker handing off to each other. And that ball rolls out of bounds. Looks like we're going to have possession of Dakota. Hopefully they can bring it back upfield and they can get a few more points before this, before this quarter ends. That would be great for them. Realistically, you'd probably want to see two more goals for Dakota to really make them feel like they're in. A 9-5 score is a lot different than a 9-3 score. But Lake Orion quickly gains possession again after Dakota's very, very minuscule push forward. And we have a shot from cross Papadellas, but it's just along the right side of the net. That's going to miss. We have around two minutes left in the third quarter. Score remains 9-3, to three, Lake Orion.
And I know I said this before, but I do think the Dragons are just going to take all the time they need, all the time in the world. They're not going to have to rush through anything. But again, it's always nice to get a goal. Cross pop Dellis with another shot on the left side this time. I'm impressed with how many skilled individuals the Dragons have. I mean, you have you have a lot of names out there. You have Kyler Carson, Cross Papadela, Sam Haynes. I mean, they've all been playing very well. Miguel Vasquez, uh, our goalie Noah Perillo. Yes. It's just been a strong showing from our team. Ooh, and a steal for Dakota. Wow. Number 24. Yes. Jacob Badges. It looks like he's going to shoot. Wow, great block. And we see a penalty on the field. Great defensive play from Lake Orion. Also great defensive play from Dakota. That was an amazing steal. Tried to turn into, sh tried to turn into a goal, but so it was a miss shot. Was thrown, that was definitely on Lake Orion's defense. So yes. we'll have to see what that was. Noah Perillo has done very good this game. He, I mean, he's had more block shots than shots let in, and that's Lake what you can ask of your goalie. One minute for slashing. And now one minute slashing for Lake Orion. So we're going to be playing a man down effectively for the rest of the quarter. And we have a Dakota offense that is hungry for one, two more goals before this quarter ends. Lake Orion does not want a man down here. Still, they do have their comfortable lead to, to provide a bit of security. But Dakota, they're not playing to lose. They're playing to win. Less than one minute Ooh. to go in the third quarter. And that's going to stay in Dakota's possession. It's number five, Noah Erickson, pass to Jake Ferguson and to Trey Edwards. We're approaching 30 seconds left in the quarter. And that is a that is a block shot. Block shot from Noah Perillo. Another great show of his defense of his defense. There's a reason they start him at goalie. And Lake Orion, there's 15 seconds left. Lake Orion, if they really want to put a nail in the coffin, if they really want to beat him down more, he'd score in these last 10 seconds we have. And that is a stop. A stop from Dakota. And they may get one more shot off here, but I think the clock is going to run down. And there's the buzzer. Total of three goals this quarter, 9-3. to three. Lake Orion in the lead. It is insane the amount of growth we have seen in the Lake Orion Dragons in this last week. One week ago today was the game against the Rochester Adams Highlanders. In that game, the Lake Orion Dragons were basically on the back foot, trying to fight against the reign of, uh, reign of terror from uh, the Highlanders' Hart brothers. Rico Hart on offense getting a hat trick early on, and uh, Antonio Hart in the goal just blocking every Lake Orion shot and a man to the point where we had to come back in overtime to win it. That is not the same Dragon team that we are seeing right now. We are seeing a team who has just been on offense basically the entire game, and they have not let up. They have just had inertia. They've had momentum, and they have not stopped. And I don't think we're going to see them stop. I mean, of course, anything can happen in these next 12 minutes, but a 9-3 to lead is something that's going to be really hard for Dakota to come back from. Yeah, they're going to need six goals. That's one goal every two minutes. That's going to be tough to do against how the Dragons have shown, have been have been playing so far. They're going to need all of the stars to align for them to have even a chance of coming back from this. So we'll see what happens. Both teams coming back on. Dakota's really gonna need, really gonna need some good play here. Maybe even a bit of luck on their side if they wanna, if they wanna get this victory or force an overtime. Honestly, probably a 50-50 mix of both. They'd probably want to start by winning this faceoff. And, and I think yes, they, they will get possession of it. 45, Dylan Copeland. He scoops the ball up and he's running with it. That's right, getting past everybody. 
Get some good distance there, you're right. Like I said, essentially they're gonna want a goal every two minutes. Which is doable if they can if they can play very well, but they also have to stop Lake Orion from scoring. Here and a quick goal. And a quick goal in the first thirty seconds. Making their score four, nine to four, Dragons lead. Aiden Criticer with his goal. I believe that is his, his second, second of, of the night. Well, it's been 30 seconds, and they need a goal every two minutes. Well, we'll if they get a goal every 30 seconds, that'd be pretty good. Oh, for that'd, them. Be, that'd be pretty good for them, too, honestly. I believe that is Jackson Vazquez and Trey Edwards. If Dakota can win another faceoff in a row, that would be extraordinary. But Lake Orion comes out with the ball, and they are running up. Giorgio Ruffini. And Sam Haynes back on the field. He gets the ball quickly to cross Papadellis. He's got a couple of goals today. Shot from Lake Orion and a score from Tyler Baker. That is in nearly another 30 seconds, 35 seconds. Two very quick goals. Assist to number four, senior cross Papadelas. If you're a member of the Dakota Cougars, this is not at all what you want to see. I, I can only assume that at this point, they are playing from a place of desperation. A 10 to four lead you still need six scores, six goals to come back and tie it up to go to overtime in 10 minutes. Yeah. This is not a position you want to be in the fourth quarter of the game. Yeah, it really hurts the Dragons getting that goal for Dakota, but they win this they win this face off here. But it's really they really can't feel good. You get a score, you're like, "All right, we opened this up good, but they get one right back." That's tough. Basically invalidates it, negates it. It's true. Oh, and Dakota, they're able to recover again. It's always a good sign if you're well, got to keep your offense persisting. Aiden Kreitzer with the ball again. The one who got the last goal for Dakota. Yes. Ooh, good stop by, that is number nine now, Brady Gerritsen playing goal for the Dragons. Ooh, right into the net of Hayden Archibald of Dakota and they're going to bring it back down the field. We have 10 minutes left. Dakota ideally would have wanted to score two at this point and have the Dragons score none, but it's pretty much exactly how we started. They still need six. Yeah, their offense is really going to have to change up, start just hitting hard effectively is what they're going to need to do if they want any chance of coming back. They're just going to need to start running for that goal, trying to get as many shots on as possible while not giving it up to the Dragons. Approaching nine minutes, I feel like I'm counting down by the minute because I'm really watching for Dakota to score a goal. They're really going to want to be quick firing with their shots, get them up quick, get past the Lake Orion defenders and get their shots off if they're going to they're gonna have a higher chance to win this game. Yeah. Every tick of a second is one less chance for them, effectively, to uh, get a goal to come back. They need to make every second count perfectly. You have Carter Cole knocked onto the ground, and Lake Orion regains possession, passing it upfield. And that is to... We see Kyler Carson with the ball. The man with four goals tonight. He has played great. Oh, 
Oh, and reclaimed by the Dragons. And a goal. That is from Braden Brown. Excellent show. Goal they scored by senior this, number 40, Braden Brown. This is McComb's greatest nightmare coming to fruition right in front of their very eyes. Now not only have they not like effectively scored because of the original Dragons goal to bring it back to a six point lead, now it's a seven point lead they have to come back to with only eight minutes left. It's true, that was a great show of offense. A missed shot turned into a made shot. The Dragons, the Dragons are still persisting, still stopping the Cougars and pushing their own agenda on this game. And we're gonna see it again with possibly um, a one face off for Lake Orion. Ooh, and he lost the ball, but and a, a simple recovery, very quick. Brady Drury, very good recovery to Giorgio Ruffini in the back. Cross Papadellis, and he's, he seems like he's sitting on the ball a lot more than the Cougars would like. Takes up the middle, and he takes a shot. That's another Dragon goal. That is the fourth, the I believe, for Cross Papadellis. Sorry, sorry, that is his third of this night. And the Dragons have tripled the Dakota score, 12 to four. This is the worst case scenario for the Cougars. I do not know what their plan is now to come back from that. They have to score a goal, like in less, like one goal in less than a minute each time. Yes, I, seven minutes on the clock, eight goals down, and Lake Orion starts right off, getting their offense back on the road. And that is knocked out of bounds. And the possession's gonna go back to Dakota. A minor, minor shine of hope in this grim quarter of theirs. Orion, oh, nine, and he almost, loses, he almost loses it. Lake Orion, oh, and he drops the ball. Just did the math. They would have to score every 52 seconds. That is not what you wanna hear if you're trying to win a game. That is effectively the worst case scenario in reality. And here it's just good Dragons defense. They're really covering the middle well. But Dakota could get a shot here, and there is a penalty and a whiff of a shot from Aiden Kreitzer. But he has played very well out of all of the Dakota guys. He has two of their goals today. He has had an impressive show of athleticism. And this could be a shot from Dakota, but... Again, good coverage from the Dragons. We have now six minutes left and eight goals to go for Dakota. Make that seven. Make that seven goals to go. And very quick shot. Very quick goal right in the back of the net. Number three, Carter Cole. Number three, Carter Cole. Now it's they need seven goals in six minutes. Still not an enviable position. Better than eight goals in six minutes, but still. Uh, you have to do a goal under every minute. Really, I would think they'd want to fire off two really quickly if they want to see a glimmer of hope. Otherwise, it's, it seems like it's pretty pretty dark for the Cougars. Now, luckily for them, Lake Orion does have a one-minute penalty for slashing, so... That ought to provide some, some beneficial... some beneficiaries to Dakota. Some peace of mind, so to say, but... And they win the face-off. That is what you want. Winning the face-off. The other team's a man down. This is their chance. They need to just score as fast as possible. I haven't really seen that clear of a formation from Dakota this game. They've been playing all around. They've been Which... doing a lot of motion offensives from what I've seen. Yeah. They've just been keeping themselves open so that they can move wherever they need to, not really playing to a more, like, set set. <laughs> So to say. And it could be going for a shot here. Oh, 
I'm a bit confused by Dakota's offense. If I were them, I would be trying to get off as many shots as quick as possible. But it seems that they're, like, taking their time here. Yeah, and he knocks it back in on what would have been out of bounds. Yes, they are, they are seeming to take their sweet time, but that, Which, you can't be doing that. And the Dragons, they're probably thinking they can play lockdown defense if Dakota's going to be passing around the whole time. I mean, realistically, they're just not going to be able to score as many goals as they need in four minutes and 40 seconds. All the Dragons really have to do at this moment is just keep up the pressure, and they've effectively got it made. See Aiden Kreitzer with the ball. It looks like he wants to go in for a shot. It's going to be another Dakota possession. This, um, this Dakota offensive strike has lasted nearly two minutes, and they don't have anything to show for it. Which normally I'd say, you know, it's good that they're being aggressive for this long. But now they have something to show for it, so. So they score with around four minutes left. Six points for Dakota, 12 for Lake Orion. We are at the point where it's getting close to them needing to score every half a minute. Which I just don't think is feasible. It is getting close. <laughs> they are really getting down to the wire at this point. Assist to number three, Carter Call. Dominant. Jameson Ray taking it up after the Lake Orion Dragons victorious face off. Timeout, Lake Orion. And that's a timeout from Lake Orion. We have around four minutes left. Around four minutes left. Still 12 to six, Lake Orion Dragons. So what are you thinking right now? What do you got? I've really got that the Dragons don't have to do much anymore except for just keep up like a bit of pressure because it's, it's so close that it's gotten to the point where Dakota to come back and at least tie, not even to win outright, but to tie and take it to overtime would need to start scoring at a rate that is just not feasible with the defense that the Dragons have been putting up. I don't think they're able to score every 40 seconds. We haven't seen something like that yet, and I don't think we're going to see it. Especially not at this point down to the wire where the Dragons are going to be playing some of their hardest. Maybe not their hardest, so to say, but they're going to make sure that Dakota isn't able to come back from it. Yeah, I'd want to try and get my victory too if I was the Dragons. They've played very well, and I'd say they've earned it. Absolutely. As I've said, they have grown exponentially since we saw them playing a constant game of catch-up last Thursday on Cinco de Mayo against the Rochester Adams Highlanders. This is a very different Dragon team. They have changed and grown so much that I think this is a well-deserved six-point lead. And here, especially, we're going to see um, we're going to see possession on Lake Orion, I believe. And if we do, then that really that really can't be good for the Cougars. I mean, there's four minutes left. I bet Lake Orion could probably cut off a minute of it just by just by passing it around. The Cougars, if they're going to want any chance, they're going to have to be aggressive with their defense, trying to knock the ball out of these guys' hands. But Lake Orion, instead of sitting, seems to. They almost seem to want another goal, which scoring's fun. And hey, another point that they get on the board is another one that the Cougars would have to scramble to try and make up. As we said earlier, sometimes in lacrosse, the best defense is just a good offense. Yep, ooh, a missed shot from Sam Haynes right over the goal. It's pretty congested there with many Dakota players. They do not want a goal going by. Lake Ryan possession again, though. And like I said, I think we're going to see a minute taken off just in this Lake Orion offensive push. And uh, we've if sent not it, more. We've sent it many times. Dakota, not looking good. Ooh, and that is a goal for Lake Orion. Brady Drury. Lake Orion that, goal that pushes their lead a bit 14, further. If I was a Cougar, my morale would be just gone at this point. They're 
it's gotten to the point where they are crossing the event horizon. They've crossed the point of no return. I do not think it is possible for them to come back and win in three minutes with what we've seen from the Dragons and from them. I just don't see it happening in any universe. Yeah, they're seven points down in three minutes. And I think it is it is safe to say that, like Orion, this is probably going to be their game. But the best thing Dakota can do is play hard, play it out. If they score two more goals, they can end on a high note. They can go into their next game and hopefully make a better performance. Yeah, at this point, their strategy is ju and their game plan really is just to make it as cl as uh, close of a win as possible for Lake Orion. We're going to see Lake Orion win this faceoff again as Giorgio Ruffini with the ball. Passed it back, a bit of a missed pass there, but easily recovered from Sam Haynes. And we are just around two minutes and 50 seconds. Seven point lead, Dragons 13, Cougars six. Right now it seems the Dragons are passing it back to each other, back and forth. Eating clock, definitely a viable strategy in this situation. And they're able to recover it again. And Dakota knocks it out, and this could be a Dakota recovery. It is. And they're quickly going upfield. There's not a lot of Lake Orion players around there. If Dakota is going to want to get a score here. players currently. That's true. Dakota is going to want to get a score. They should be looking to do it quick. Trey Edwards again. I believe he scored their first goal, and he takes a shot just right. Just right of the goal. We're approaching a minute and 30 seconds left. Dakota's still going to re remain possession, but... Timeout Lake Orion. That is a timeout from Lake Orion. That is their last timeout that they can use. Why they're calling it, I have no clue, but... I don't know. They'll probably... I can see them just recuperating, putting their defense down, just burn out this last minute and 30 seconds and claim their win. That's really all they have to do is just whittle the clock down. Just let the seconds tick away and they've got a really good victory on their hands. That's true. I know I've said it twice, maybe three times now, but I'm still astonished by how much we've seen the Dragons change and just how much better they're playing now. After only a week, exactly seven days, it's been since that mess on Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. They've... To them, just utterly dominating. They've been in the lead this entire game. Yeah, they've put up a great show. I'm sure all the Lake Orion fans are happy to see this team playing the way they are. Absolutely. Definitely one of the high points of their shaky season, so to say. We have Dakota possession, the last 90 seconds of the game. Ooh, and taken away right by Jackson Bellinger for Lake Orion. <laughs> the Dragons seem like they want another goal here. Ooh. That's going to be a Dakota ball. Ooh, and number 24, he drops it. He picks it back up. He drops it again. One minute Cole Groan for the Dragons picks it up. At the minute mark. We have Dakota to gain possession again. Lake Orion to get it right back. And it seems he may have an injury. 
Number 40, Braden Brown, is holding his arm. And he has a drop stick. He's picking it up. He has played very well this game. I believe he has one or two goals. The entire team has played extremely well this game. That's true. They've all been... Well, there have, of course, been some standout players. I really think we need to give a round of applause to the team as a whole. They have worked as a single cohesive unit to just dominate this entire game from the very first minute to this very last one. The Korean Dragons possession. We have 45 seconds left, 13 to 6 still. A Dragons lead and seemingly a Dragons win in just under a minute here. Cross Papadellis. Just waiting out the clock. Yep. Seems that's what they're going to be doing. Having a little fun with it, too. Yeah. Are we going to see another shot? Uh, I believe they're going to keep passing. Oh, and another shot goes beyond the goal. 11.9 seconds left on the clock. And now it's running down again. And it's running down, like Orion. I wouldn't be surprised if we just see more passing. Maybe a last minute try for a shot like there, and he scores. Tyler Baker scores. To add under, insult to injury. Under five seconds. The There's under a second left on the clock. 14 to 6, like Orion. Multiple goals from Tyler Baker, multiple goals from. Multiple players on Lake Orion. Scored by senior number three, number three Tyler Baker. Oh, that was dirty. That was adding salt in the wound. Final score, Dragons 14. And they're going to close it out there. Cougars they're going to call that final. Let's give a round of applause to both A wonderful for victory game. for the Lake Orion Dragons. Yes, the final score, again, 14-6. to six, Lake Orion Dragons over the Dakota Cougars. The Dragons' next game will be on Saturday against Granville at noon. Well, we'll see if they can keep their offense, see if they can keep their good game play. They're celebrating on the field as they've deserved to. This was a great game, high-scoring game for Lake Orion. Absolutely. I do want to see, like you said, on Saturday, if they can keep this sort of momentum and just keep pushing from the beginning and making sure they stay in the lead the entire time. If so... That could be wonderful things for the end of the season and possible playoffs. I tip my hat to Lake Orion. Very well done. Absolutely. They deserve this victory wholeheartedly. Well, this has been live coverage of the varsity Lake Orion lacrosse team versus the varsity Dakota lacrosse team for Dragon Broadcasting. I am Raymond Valentine. And I'm Jameson Fanning. We hope you have a wonderful night tonight.